We all know that ships can communicate using VHF, but how exactly does that work when maybe they're of different nationalities? Say, one French, bonjour, one American, hey, and one British, alright mate. In the past, of course, things were much simpler. Ships couldn't speak to each other, so instead they would hoist flags to transmit a message. Surprisingly, that system is still in use today with all officers needing to understand what every flag means. For example, hoisting this flag means my vessel is healthy and I request free pratique. You'll notice cruise ships hoist it whenever they go into port and are waiting for clearance for passengers to proceed ashore. On approach to a port, you may notice them flying this flag, Golf, which means I require a pilot, followed by Hotel, showing that the pilot is now on board. By combining different flags, suddenly you get hundreds of different messages that you could send. Hotel Whiskey 6, for example, could have been flown by the Titanic if modern codes existed at the time as it literally means I have collided with an iceberg. You can check out a book called The International Code of Signals if you'd like to see all the different combinations. Anyway, as time went on, radio telephony was developed which suddenly meant that ships could transmit messages over much greater distances using Morse code. Although they couldn't yet transmit voice, they could send a series of beeps. I bet today, if I say, dit dit dit, da da da, dit dit dit, you would recognise it as the Morse for SOS. Interestingly, SOS doesn't actually stand for anything, it's simply a distinctive pattern that's far more effective at communicating distress than the previous CQD message. Da dit, da dit, da da dit da, da dit dit. Anyway, as time went on, Morse code eventually gave way to voice transmissions through the system that we still use today, VHF. It's basically a radio transmitter that works in the same way as any commercial radio station. When two stations are tuned to the same frequency, or channel, either one can transmit and anyone else listening in on the same channel can hear what they're saying. That's great if you're all within the same fleet or in your own waters, but what about international waters? Chances are both vessels are from different countries with different native languages. Of course, one solution is to simply learn lots of other languages, maybe using an app like this video's sponsor, Speakly. Speakly is a language learning application that actually lets you choose how you want to study new vocabulary. When it was created, Speakly's founders researched thousands of language learners for six years to create a unique method that teaches words and sentences based on their relevance in real life situations. Based on their research, this methodology helps you learn languages five times faster compared to what you're accustomed to, which means you can get from zero to solid speaking skills in around three or four months. Speakly offers everything you need to learn a language. You'll learn new vocabulary, have speaking exercises, writing exercises, listening comprehension exercises, and even music recommendations in the language that you're learning. This means that your studies should never get boring and monotonous because there's so much to do and experience. Speakly is available for both web and mobile, and you can try it for free for seven days and get a 60% discount if you join the annual subscription. So click the link below and start learning some cool new languages today. Anyway, back to the shipping industry where one option was for everyone to learn lots of different languages or the industry could simply find one common language for everyone to use. Surprisingly, the ancient maritime industry actually took influence from the far newer civil aviation industry which had already adopted English as its common language. As a lot of early commercial aviation occurred in English-speaking countries, it was the logical choice for a relatively young industry. The shipping industry, on the other hand, had been around for thousands of years, so the decision was a little harder. It wasn't until the late 1980s that the IMO finally went the same way as civil aviation and adopted English as the language of the sea. I say English, of course, but what I really mean is an adapted version of English that's been formalised into its own language as standard maritime communication phrases. Ambiguous words such as may, might, should and could are eliminated and replaced by others that make communication much clearer. You should take the deep water route, while clear to a native speaker contains the ambiguous word should, which can easily be misinterpreted. Instead, standard maritime communication phrases would structure the sentence as advice, take the deep water route. When English isn't your native language, you have to learn standard maritime communication phrases to be able to communicate at sea. For native speakers, however, you will already understand someone else speaking SMCP, so your priority is to learn the differences that mean your own words will be understood correctly by others. Of course, with maritime communication, language is only part of the story. The other aspect we need to understand is the technique. VHF is not like a phone. Both radio sets get tuned to the same frequency or channel. Channels are just an easy way for maritime radios to tune in as it's much easier to go to channel 16 than it is to go to 156.8 megahertz. 
Anyway, once you're both tuned into the same channel, you can both hear any transmissions on that channel. If one of you transmits, everyone else tuned into that channel can hear it. But if you both transmit, then the transmissions interfere and the message can be lost. This is known as simplex communication and it's the most basic way that VHF radios can communicate. When both users are trained, it's fine, but when one of the users isn't trained, it's not going to work. In the days before mobile phones, for example, a ship could radio up to a shore station and get patched through to the phone network to speak to someone ashore, maybe their office or even friends and family. What they found was that it rarely worked because a phone conversation is two-way, while simplex VHF is only one-way. The answer was to introduce a duplex channel. Where a simplex channel is comprised of a single frequency, duplex channels contain two. On one frequency, shore stations transmit and ship stations receive. On the other frequency, ship stations transmit and shore stations receive. Each radio can simultaneously transmit on their own transmission frequency and receive on their own separate reception frequency. Suddenly, two-way simultaneous communication is possible over VHF, so it can behave in practically the same way as a telephone. Of course, we all know that technology continued to evolve and now we have mobile and satellite phones, so there's no longer a need for VHF to be used like that. Suddenly, all the old duplex channels were just sitting idle as they were of no use for communication between vessels. A few were repurposed into VHF reporting channels for ship-to-shore communication and others were split to make them more useful. For example, the old duplex channels 87 and 88 were repurposed, with their secondary frequencies being given over to AIS and the original numbers becoming simplex channels instead. In the USA, they went a step further and actually sold off some of the unused frequencies to the railways. This is why VHF radios have an international mode and a USA mode. The USA mode stops the radio from making illegal broadcasts on frequencies that have changed use. For example, channel 1 is a duplex channel on international VHF sets, but in the USA, you only have access to the simplex channel 1A. The other half has been sold. Maritime communication really is a very interesting topic that I could ramble on about for hours, but I won't because this video is already going to be a bit of a challenge to animate. If you are interested in hearing me chat a lot more about this though, I'd like to invite you to check out the director's commentary video below or consider joining the casual navigation community.